One of my favorite ideological opponents, Ted Trimpa, who's done more damage to the state than anybody I know. Ted, good to see you again. <laughs> Happy to be here. All right, so you've worked in democratic politics for a long time. You helped mastermind what we call the blueprint. Years, yeah. Really? Yeah, 25. Well, for yeah. a 35-year-old man, that's not bad. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. All right, uh, when we last talked, um, you and I were chatting, and you were saying, you know the crap you guys are going through as Republicans? I fear it's coming to us. You know, what you guys are going through with uh, Trump and how that's ripping a lot of the party apart, um, you know, we're next, and I can see it. First of all, how surprised were you that Trump won at all, a little bit? I was very surprised that, that, that Trump won. Um, what I wasn't surprised was how, because you could see it early on, and that was the way he was going to win is drive up blue-collar white vote. And the way you drive up blue-collar white vote is you hit every third rail of politics. You hit the misogynistic rail, you hit the racist rail, you hit the homophobia rail, even though he tries to claim that he's good on gay, but he's really not. Just look at the people around him, the Islamophobia rail. And it just it wound up all this fear that existed and played off of that distrust that exists now and beat the entire establishment. But there, there's, Bernie and Trump are the same coin, just flip sides. There was, there was something about Bernie, it's like the establishment is working against you. And a fair amount of Bernie voters uh, who were dis, uh, disheartened voted for Trump. And I heard Trump voters who were tempted to, with Bernie. You saw this coming, and you said something to the effect of, that could be us next, us being Democrats, that we yeah. could have this huge disruption inside the party. Are you sensing that? Yeah, yeah, I'm very worried about it. And there are a couple of reasons why I'm worried about it. First of all, one, take a look at where Democrats are at the state level nationwide. We are in the worst place that we've been since the Civil War, since like the parties flipped. And we have lost a percentage of the white vote, just Democrats running at the state level, 20 points over 16 years. And this country is still 70, what, 3% white. We have got to figure out what's go going on. We can, demogra uh, demography is not destiny, that's one. Two, this distrust in institutions is so real and there was a transparent primary on the Republican side. That's why Trump won. We didn't have a transparent primary on the Democratic side. It was waiting for somebody that. to win. The system was set for Hillary to have a better chance of winning. And the establishment was deciding that she should be winning. It was her when, turn. When we were not listening to the people. And this is not to say that Bernie could have been nominated and won, but it says something about democracies and the power of the individual vote. There's a mojo that comes with that. And you cross it, you pay. The Republicans paid for it, we're about to, I think. All right, add some meat to that, we're about to. Why don't we bring it to Colorado? Okay. Now, I've always been amazed how my team uh, has a f circular firing squad, uh, and it's our primaries. And so, uh, Democrats put up one guy. I remember when that one guy was Ritter. Now think about this, here's a pro-life Catholic who got the nomination to be governor. From Denver. From Denver. And there was, there was no Democrat to, to challenge him. We, of course, had Bob Beaupre and, and Holtzman who beat each other senseless so that neither one could win. You know, you, you jump ahead a few years and then you, you had the Dan Mays catastrophe, um, and, which just shows. But we always boy. felt like he should be the Republican candidate. <laughs> well, you guys put money into his campaign. Yeah. Well, how about more than just a, yeah. <laughs> want, want, want to talk about that one? Mm -hmm. So when it got that's another show. No, no, this is a good show. You guys put money into um, defeating McGinnis in the primary. You did some ads against McGinnis so that the weaker candidate would win. We did ads about character. <laughs> You're so proud of yourself. But it, it made the difference. Once that primary Arguably. was over, it, it was it was over. But more importantly, Republicans got you into that position so that you could push a little bit, and it fell. And Hickelooper won. Last time around, we also had something. The primary wasn't as ugly, but still, we, we don't do it. Right. You guys might finally have a nasty primary. Well, you also have our secret weapon, and that's Dudley Brown. That's true. Yes. W explain that. Well, because he always supports people on the far, far right. And those are the ones for us that are the easiest to beat. Because for him, it's more about being right than absolutely winning in the end. You just take a look at the people that he supported over the years. These are people that we love to run against. Well, and a lot of it's because it's easier to fundraise there. It's not, a, it's not about oh, winning. It's, 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 it's about for making him. money. Yeah. He should and thank us for all those gun bills we ran. I'd, I'd love to know how much money he made off of that. And, why, and, and has he spent it? Where is the money? 
that's another show. I would love to do that one. All right, but let's get to, get to this one. So right now, I'm trying to look at the field of, uh, of candidates on your side. And it's not just, it's, it's not shaping up to be, you know, what I would say, a nice little primary. This could be a hard-hitting primary. And oh, between, be. between Kerry Kennedy, who's, who a lot of people have strong feelings for, Ed Perlmutter, who I believe uh, is one of the guys who loves to campaign. I think he just, it's, it's that old school yeah. Irish politician, he loves to campaign. He's genetically built to do that. And, and now Jared Polis, who people are giggling about now, because how could a gay congressman from Boulder have a shot? I think that's a real way to underestimate him. I completely agree. Um, all right, what happens? Uh, first of all, one, I think the reason why it's going to be a little bit different here in our Democratic primary than what you're seeing happen nationally is that this will be the first time that we have open primaries for a statewide race. And I think this is going to change, potentially could change the dynamic uh, within Republican and Democratic primaries. And what I mean by that is you may not necessarily see the power of the extreme left or extreme right have as much power as they normally would if you didn't have an open primary. I would be more concerned about the farther left having a greater voice, not just saying that that voice shouldn't be heard, but with an open primary, you don't, you, you don't know for sure what that mix of voter is going to be, which then means that there's probably going to be a greater campaign around what you call the persuasion universe of voters. And I think all of this in my mind on the Democratic side points to Jared. This is Jared's strength. Jared's strength is a 21st century campaign. Jared's strength is he actually does know how to talk about business in a way that a lot of people don't realize. And three, he's been working around the state a lot longer than people have been thinking about, and he'll also spend his own money. And whether we like it or not, as long as spending money is free speech, money's gonna find its way into politics. All right, I think you need to do a disclosure here. You got, you got a favorite in this campaign? I do, I do, and everybody's gonna faint, but it's Jared. Even though I opposed him when he ran for Congress, because a very dear friend of mine, Joan Fitzgerald, was running against him, um, I think it's his time. And quite frankly, I'm 50, I just had heart surgery, and to see the first gay governor in Colorado is something that means a lot to me. Really? Yeah. That, for me, that, that makes no sense. Who cares I know, it's who he goes to bed with? It's identity, identity politics, politics yeah. and who cares who he goes to bed with? Yeah, it's, I worry it's about identity, for you, John, it's identity politics when it's not about you. When it's about you personally, I, I, prior to heart surgery, I, I, it, this wouldn't have really affected me. It has now. This, this, this means something because it says something to that eight-year-old kid, that 10-year-old kid, that 14-year-old kid, that happens to be GLBT and that, hey, you too can, I know you think yeah. it's Mamby Pamby, Pollyannish, it, it, yeah. that, it, but so, it actually so means something. I, I would rather have somebody <laughs> who's good on policy. So let me ask you but this But you're going to get good on policy with them. Yeah. Too. Let, let, you will. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll talk about that in a second. Let me, let me ask you, if it was a Republican who was openly gay running for governor. It'd be tough. It'd be would tough you support for me. him then? It'd be tough for me. It'd That's not an answer. Me. Would you support him? Uh, it would be tough for me. Depends who he's running against. Uh, uh, Jared's out, but there's a, a gay Republican. Depends what he's for. I mean, All the stuff we evil Republicans are for. <laughs> it's just that he's gay. Uh, no, well, on the Democratic side, it's easier, John, because, you know, 80% of what Jared stands for, I agree with. You know, some of the stance that he's had around the environment and oil and gas, I don't think he's as bad on oil and gas as a lot of people give him, uh, you know. Yeah, yeah, he is. You know, gruff about. Um, but I, I have real issues with that. But outside of that, I'm pretty much there. With Republicans, remember, it's, this, it's hard for me to find a good remember, Republican. Remember, Jared's the guy who gave us Amendment 23, which messed with our Constitution. He's well, the he guy also who gave us, us Amendment 41. I know, there, there are a long list it. of things he we can complain. He also gave us, with his wallet, uh, Amendment 27, which put in all these ridiculous uh, uh, spending limits, which turns everything into lawsuits. All right, here, let me take my take on this. The reason Jared is going to be underestimated is because he's goofy. And Coloradans mm -hmm. like goofy. But what he brings in the primary is he's gonna bring the gay vote. You just said it, this is, this is big maybe. for you. I don't know, maybe. He's gonna bring the anti-energy vote. He's gonna bring the Bernie vote, I think, out of all, all the candidates. That's a tough thing. You know, I, still think, I still think Perlmutter has, is still in the driver's seat only because of his connections, his hard oh, work. Oh, definitely. Uh, and, and he knows how to govern. He's one and of the hardest been... working candidates you'll ever meet. Right. I mean, and he... one of the most genuine, straight up about what's going on, knows how to cut a deal. He and our last guest, Mike Kaufman, are cut from the same cloth. That is, they hmm. campaign, they work, they're earnest men. Look what you they've done to their districts, winning right. in the 6th and the 7th. Yeah. 
so this is not going to, can, can you step away from your love of a gay governor long enough <laughs> to handicap this race? Sure. And that you've, you've got potentially the first female governor in Kerry Kennedy, but you don't care about that. No, I care a lot about that. Uh, not enough, apparently. Okay, well, no, because that's not who I am. All right. I tell you what. How, how bad will this primary be? How destructive to the final candidate will this be? Will you guys finally have a Republican-esque circular firing squad the way that we've been able to enjoy it for so many years? Um, I think this primary could look a lot like the level of rancor that the Bennett-Romanoff primary was. And so for people that were in each of those camps, they felt like it was really, really nasty. For a number of us that you know, we had our, our choice in it, but we weren't involved in the campaigns, just literally watching it from the outside. It didn't seem that way, it just seemed like a really competitive primary. I think that's what we're gonna have. Is it gonna be really nasty? Knowing Kerry, knowing Michael, knowing Ed, and knowing Jared, I just, I just don't see that in them. That's not who they are. Um, and on your side, well, you, 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 have, you have some folks and you have some consultants that play a little rougher and a little different well, hang than on we a do. second, hang on a second. Thanks to campaign finance laws, the people you just ran off going for governor, they might be wonderful people. They don't run their campaigns anymore. Independent expenditure committees and That's 527s true. run those. I don't think I wouldn't necessarily say they run the campaign, but it is definitely. They identify the narrative of the candidate now. Uh, that is true. That's where the money oh, is. No, that's true. That's true. Um, and it's something that has to be addressed. But again, this goes back to my earlier comment. As long as spending money is free speech, and as long as we have a market-based economy that's regulated by rules that are set by people that we elect or they influence, money's gonna find its way into politics, whether we like it or not. And so we have to, have to figure out a way to level the playing field some, but also bring transparency. If people are spending money to an effect election, everyone should know about that. So that way you can make a judgment about that candidate based on the people that are spending money for them. I would love to know where the Chamber of Commerce spends its money in races, because they spend tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of dollars on races, and we, have, we don't know for sure where. And our side does it too, our side does it too. Listen, I'm just holding out hope you guys get a taste, just a taste of, of, of what it's like. Tell me on the Republican side, we've got less than half a minute here, what, what do you see on the Republican side? Well, looking outside who, in- Who would you like to run against? Oh, I'd love to run against George Brockler, um, not Walker, because Walker's kind of goofy. Cynthia, I think, is the dark horse that could clear the field. If Cynthia gets in, she's an extraordinary candidate. Um, she's done, I think, an extraordinary job as attorney general. Um, and the way she's been staking out turf around states' rights and, and standing up to the federal government. Um, I'm going to find that gay Republican candidate for you. We'll, we'll, we'll test you. Okay. Ted, always great. Listen for me on KHOW Radio. Read me in the Denver Post. Check out the Independence Institute at independenceinstitute.org. We'll see you next week.